And now that I've talked your ears off for 27 minutes, graduating summa cum laude with the first ever dual enrollment in defense and prosecution, Mr. Apollo Justice. Thank you. I would like to begin by addressing... Sorry. <clears throat> I would like to begin by addressing all of the inspirations that led me onto this path. When I was just a kid... Uh, uh, no, this isn't right. You know, I didn't really have a whole lot of heroes growing up. The closest thing I had was my friend, Emma, who unfortunately couldn't be here tonight. We were always there for each other, and hoped things would just work out someday. It was a blind faith. We put our heads down and worked really hard all through school. I'm not sure where any of us would be right now if it weren't for our mothers and fathers. I never knew what it felt like to have a parent. Emma never knew the feeling either. I worked very hard to earn these degrees, but I never would have succeeded to such heights without inspiration along the way. And as a very wise woman once said, no one achieves anything alone. When I was just 13, something horrible happened. Our lives were not the same. And it was at that moment that someone very important appeared. It was a hero to look up to. My hero wasn't a man clad in armor or a superhero with all sorts of special powers and abilities. My hero was a man clad in a blue two-piece suit with spiky hair and a big pink tie. And that man was Phoenix Wright. Mr. Wright has been defending the innocent from injustice for years. The faith he places in his clients and his own abilities is truly inspiring. And on that day, when everything was falling apart, he became involved in a case that would save my friend and her sister. It was a complicated case that nearly destroyed the lives of many people around me and questioned the righteousness of this very city. We all watched the broadcasting of the trial. We knew that corruption could plague this city into darkness. And when all hope was lost, Mr. Edgeworth, the prosecutor of the case, came through and created a grand turnabout. He took a sharp stance against injustice for my friend, and with such firm strength, he deduced a path forward. I was just a kid. I was the heroless kid who watched everything unfold with my eyes. I couldn't save Emma. I couldn't save her sister. I observed it all. And when I watched as Mr. Wright and Mr. Edgeworth worked together to save my friend, I felt hope for the very first time. There was nothing ceremonial about it. It was simply this. A reason to fight. To work hard. To care and appreciate. To respect what a hero does. And it's our responsibility to bolster that spirit in every person we defend or prosecute. Whichever side of the aisle you fall, and my body is contorted to fit into both. Never stop believing in what you can do. Okay? Alright. Thank you, and I'm fine! Lovely, Apollo. You really opened yourself up to the audience. That's nice of you to say, Juniper. And yeah, I still kind of feel vulnerable about it, but it's all good. If I graduate with high honors next year, um, I, I hope to give a speech as passionate as yours. Hey, the last year is the hardest. And you're on the judge track, so you have your own challenges to overcome. Though I'm sure you'll be fine. Aww. Thanks, Apollo. You're always such a sweet friend. No, uh, why do you say that? I'm just here. <laughs> um, well, you keep such a cool head and care about people. You know, most people with your talent and brain would have large egos. <laughs> but not you. Right, right, y yeah. Mr. Justice, may I speak with you for a moment? Oh, Apollo, I better tend to the plants. Huh? Is that... Phoenix Wright! It really is you! Whoa, 
No need to yell, Justice. I'm right here. <laughs> Sorry. I didn't know you'd be attending. Well, of course. I've had a good relationship with Thema's Legal Academy for many years now. The Dean always spoke highly of you. I see. Uh, thank you for attending, Mr. Wright. I didn't think you'd hear all those personal things I mentioned. <laughs> Please don't be embarrassed. It was actually rather touching to hear I've had such a positive effect on you. Miles and I... We're very grateful to have been such an inspiration to people like yourself, Abalo. You have the potential to truly make change in the legal system. Of course, not to mention your potential to be a great attorney. You don't have to say that. No, really. I've been looking forward to meeting you for quite some time. And since you've now finished your studies with both tracks, I've come to make you an offer. You're joking. How would you like to work for me? As a defense attorney, that is. My agency is in desperate need of legal support in order to keep up with all of these clients. Plus, I need someone who really understands the back end of the business. Wow. Uh, I've never had a business, sir. And you don't think you'd be capable of it? Mr. Justice, you're so humble. I just have one question for you, Mr. Wright. If I may ask. A sure thing. Do you remember me at all? From the case involving the Sky Sisters? I was always that kid just sitting with Emma in the detention center before you would come in and discuss the case with her. Although I mostly just heard about you from her. Actually, I do. Emma, she would often talk about you and how happy you made her during those high school years. Since you weren't really tied to the case, I simply chose to not pursue it further. Wow, that's exactly the kind of direct and firm logic I'd expect from him. But anyhow... Ah! My good friend Christoph Gavin also wanted to say hello. Hello. It is not often that Mr. Wright speaks so highly of someone. Needless to say, I was quite intrigued at the prospect of meeting you. Hey, Mr. Gavin! Hmm, that's a very interesting bracelet you have, Mr. Justice. Where... where did you get that from? I've had this bracelet for as long as I can remember, but I don't know why I even have it. It's a striking design for sure. Gavin and Co. Law Offices could really benefit from an aesthetic philosophy like that. Your office complex is gorgeous. What are you talking about? Our quarrels aside, I hope you'll consider Mr. Wright's offer. If you decline, please note that my firm has openings as well. I never thought I'd be in such high demand. I'm a bit overwhelmed by all of this, I have to admit. <laughs> Take some time to think about it. When you've made your decision, just stop by the Write Anything Agency and let me know either way. Congratulations once again, Mr. Justice. Thank you, Mr. Wright. All right, that went incredibly well, honestly. Congratulations, Apollo! Ah! You scared the hell out of me, Emma! <laughs> Pesca has been thinking about you a lot. So I see. I'm really sorry I couldn't come to the graduation today. The precinct has been swamped all day. It's totally fine. The recording should be on the website by the end of the night. I think you'll really enjoy my speech. I have to say, I was not expecting such a large crowd. You didn't let your cords of steel ruin the celebration, did you? Okay, that's not fair. Was my favorite defense attorney at the graduation? Oh, about that. Um, I kinda have a job now. Huh? I don't understand what you're saying. Uh, um, <laughs> yeah. Look, Apollo, I don't have the patience for this. Just out with it. Mr. Wright approached me after my graduation, and offered me a position as a defense attorney at his agency. Huh? I swear, Apollo, if you are joking with me, I'm gonna walk out of here right now. No, Emma, I'm serious, really. I just don't know whether I'd want to act as a defense attorney or a prosecutor right now. Dude, you've always been great at exposing criminals and holding them accountable in the mock trials. You're kind of known for your brash attitude in the legal setting. That's valid. But Emma, why wouldn't you approve of me working with this man? This is Phoenix Wright! He's your idol too! It is an amazing opportunity, yes. But look, Los Angeles still allows prosecutors to investigate crime scenes, and you'd also be assigned a detective. Apollo, we could work together potentially. That would be awesome, right? Come on, I could really use the help considering I'm not in the forensics position I deserve. It says forensics on the armband you wear- Shut it, Apollo! I get it. I just thought you'd be happy for me. 
After all I've worked towards. No, no, Apollo, please don't get the wrong idea. I am very happy for you. Working with Phoenix Wright as a lawyer right out of university? That's the dream. It's ultimately on you to decide. I just think, you know, you managed to get two degrees. I think every whiz kid ought to think about which to use, that's all. That's fair. Sorry, I didn't intend to argue with you about it. You're totally fine. I think you should take the day to relax now. You've earned it. Thanks, Emma. Oh, wait, one more thing. Hmm? Remember back in 2017, we used to talk about Mr. Wright as this legendary figure? Of course. He really is who we thought he was. His confidence, his positivity, it's even stronger now than it was back then. I believe it. I hope to run into him sometime. Maybe you can stop by the agency after I've worked there for a while. I'll introduce you. That would be great. I still have many thanks to give him. Me too. And? That's what I hope to accomplish. I'd say you have a great shot at it, Raymond. Mr. Edwards, sir, the latest poll results are in. Very good. And what of it, Detective? You have 73.2% of the municipal vote. I knew you'd be leading the pack, edgy boy! Well then, it appears I'll be Chief Prosecutor very soon. Your father would be very proud. Yes. I believe he may have been. But there's no time for reminiscing on the past. There is much work to be done. Los Angeles deserves a true reformation, and so does the country at large. Is this another campaign speech of yours, or do I have noodles for a brain? <sighs> oh, Detective Gumshoe, I should tell you that the postman has been looking for you. Really, sir? Oh, I've been losing paychecks left and right. Hey, you take that call, I gotta go. I'll give you some space as well. Thank you, Raymond. Hello. Chief, uh, High Prosecutor Miles Edgeworth speaking. Perhaps a little ahead of the election results, are we? Ah, Prosecutor Blackwell. A good friend of mine. Simon. But perhaps a little... on edge. It has been a while since we last spoke on the telephone. Hm. When would think you've been avoiding me, Miles? Ah, uh, it was nothing intentional. I have accumulated quite the schedule. I'm just messing with you, Mr. Key to the City. <laughs> <laughs> I've actually been meaning to call you for some time. There are very interesting possibilities dwelling inside. As a friend, I thought I might be able to propose something to you. But of course. After all you've done for the prosecutor's office, I'd be more than happy to assist. What is the circumstance? It's Athena. She's graduating earlier from Oxford tomorrow evening. Really? I suppose they truly do grow up fast. Hm. And how is Athena doing? I wish I could say she's been chatting with me, but... The university has kept her entirely enthralled and focused. You know, I used to find her jabbering incoherent and dreadful at times. But I have really come to miss her presence. I see. Curiously, the matters at play involve her desire to move to America, Edgeworth no more. And I believe she misses her father. I am benevolently requesting if you would secure a spot in Los Angeles' DA office for me. That is certainly quite the proposal. You wish to move back to America, then? And I'll be bringing her with me. On a permanent basis. However, I will need to be generating income for the both of us. I truly need a prosecutorial position if it is at all possible. This is quite the delightful plan of action, Prosecutor Blackwell. Uh, however, the branch is tightly wound at the moment. I cannot guarantee a position for you, even if I become Chief Prosecutor. 
Oh, poppycock. Ugh. Perhaps to take the edge off, consider the possibility of Athena moving here on her own if she would be willing to do so. There won't be anything stopping her from having a successful career here in California. If she complies with the potentiality of departing without me, then perhaps this would be agreeable. Moreover, I am formally requesting you remain in Europe until you have finished providing aid to Scotland Yard. Your investigative work is highly valued by the detectives and police officers over there. Huh. Per the stipulation, I would like to inquire about securing a stable job for Athena in California. Then, she is brilliant as my hawk, but still young. Arguably too naive to be wandering about the landscapes and cities and parks and so forth. You have such an interesting mind, Blackwell. Very well. I will make it a personal objective to secure a defense attorney position for her. It is the least I could do for him. Many thanks to you, my good friend. As much as it pains me not to come with her, London's still in a state of rubbish, with all of its international crime going adrift. Once again, I have to thank you for your commitment to getting to the truth of the matter. You take good care, Prosecutor Blackwell. Farewell for now, Ejutono. Now is perhaps as good a time as any. I know just what to do. Hey, Miles. What can I do you for? Sorry to call you out of the blue, right? But we have to chat about something important. All right, let's hear it. It wasn't long ago that I recommended you go through with recruiting Apollo Justice, but there's an up-and-coming attorney making an appearance soon. Oh, really? Is this penance for the DA office becoming a web of contracted employees? <laughs> you may wish, but I'm afraid not. This is no humor-filled notification. A high-achieving prodigy is about to graduate from Oxford with a law degree, and at the age of 17, if I am correct. A personal friend of mine is her caretaker. Excellent! Congratulations to the both of them! Her name is Athena Sykes. She's moving to America in pursuit of a career as a defense attorney. And, if I recall, your agency has become something of a party palooza over the last few years. Might need a little more... legitimacy behind its employees, hmm? Well said. <laughs> Mr. Wright, personal favors may mean nothing to you knowing you're as famous as ever, but to me this is quite serious. She could be a tremendous member of your team, and it would truly mean a great deal if you interviewed her for a position. All jokes aside, I am definitely interested. An interview sounds like a great place to start. I'll see if I can reach her through email and I'll get right to it. Thanks for thinking of us, Miles. <sighs> you are quite welcome. I wish you both the best of luck. Talk to you soon. Mr. Wright! Ah, yes. Come on in, Athena. Have a seat. How was your trip? It was so fun. Ah, good. My plane actually arrived earlier than expected, so I boarded the plane and got to adjust my seat. And it was a window seat. I felt so happy to be given the opportunity to look out at the skies and... Uh, in the interest of time, why don't we talk about it later? <laughs> so sorry, Mr. Wright. <laughs> hey, boss! Huh? Uh, Apollo, uh, this isn't a very good time. I didn't realize she was here already. The plane was scheduled to land in half an hour. Why is she here? Uh, let's not waste Miss Sykes' time. What do you need, Apollo? So, is Athena supposed to fill out a W-9, or is it because of the upcoming shift in structure that she's exempt from the form? So many questions, so little time! Okay, two things. Miss Sykes just arrived. She hasn't obtained her citizenship yet. I don't believe Edgeworth mentioned a work visa either. I know I'm sort of... rushing into things, but I know what to do. Ask me any questions you have, Mr. Wright. Uh, I'll get out of your hair. All right, let's get down to business. Why did you decide to become a lawyer? Um, 
Okay, well... It's a tough question, for sure. Right. I've heard a lot of great things about you, but I haven't been able to speak with you about your passion for law. I'm simply curious. I understand. Well, here goes. Take your time. I'd appreciate anything you'd be willing to share. You see, my mother died when I was a young girl. She was murdered in what would become a high-profile case, involving the company you unveiled to all of England, Labralum Inc. She worked at one of their facilities as a researcher of medicines. Little did we know, a serial killer had been traveling throughout the country and taking lives. It all happened so fast, and it was so devastating. To me, a young girl, I woke up one day without her, and read everywhere. That's horrible. You were the child involved in the RN7 incident. Yes, that was me. Just a little girl trying to understand why things happened to me this way. I'm sorry to bring all this to your attention, Mr. Wright. It's definitely a lot to take in. I just wonder, why was my mother taken? These were the thoughts I had for many, many years. My mother... Athena! Hey, Athena! Are you okay? Athena! Can you hear me? Yes. Oh! Uh, Miss Sykes? I'm here, Mom. I'm okay. Ah! What was the name of that person Edgeworth told me I could call? Blackguard? Ah, uh, they won't pick up! I better call 911 now. Huh? No, stop! Ah! Mr. Wright, I am so, so sorry. I really messed up my chances of working with you. Uh, Athena, first and foremost, are you okay? I think so. I feel in control again. My breathing... Everything is fine now, I think. Okay. Uh, why don't we take a five-minute break and I'll get you some water. Please, don't feel guilty about anything that just happened, Miss Sykes. Okay. Yes, that's... nice to hear. Thank you for understanding my situation. It's nothing. Take a beat, I'll come back in a little while. Hey, Mr. Wright. I'm ready to continue the interview for the defense attorney position. That's great. Well, let's head to it then. Right. So, as for why I decided to pursue law, it really comes down to what happened after my mother passed. I see. Of course, when everything was going on, it was really intense. I didn't really know who to turn to as well. Right. But... During the investigation into what had happened, the prosecutor assigned to the case met with me quite often. It was Simon, who's been my caretaker for many years now. Ah, Mr. Blackwell wasn't family, but someone you met through the aftermath of the incident. You see, with all due respect, Mr. Wright, that's not the whole story. Oh, uh, by all means, please continue. The case involving the serial killer was incredibly trying, and eventually, the case went cold when Scotland Yard closed the books on finding a suspect for good. With nowhere to go and no justice for Mom, Simon was nice enough to adopt me. Yeah, we became really close during this time. He's been like a father to me ever since, really. I know it's uncommon, but it's what happened to me. I... I know what you mean. The care and protection I had from Simon... He was an odd fellow, maybe a bit too serious at times, but it was that father-like quality to the way he treated me. It changed me forever. And my passion for law began around the time he took me in. I wanted to defend innocent people. Some people look rough on the outside, but have really good hearts on the inside. 
emotions, law... Of course these are the things I'd care about. Athena, thank you for sharing all of this with me. It must be a lot on your shoulders coming here and moving on from all that's happened. Yes. But, I'm actually a rather happy gal these days. Really. I have a lot of... passion for the things I care about. Before I got to the hard questions, you did have a lot of energy coming in here. <laughs> well, Athena, I've heard everything I need to. From Edgeworth, from you, you're hired. Uh, are you serious? Well, yes. I'd mostly made up my mind before anyways. <laughs> Heck yes! Why don't you stay at the office tonight? I have a special guest to pick up at the airport later. Sure. That would be really cool. <laughs> Whew. I'm so glad things are going to work out. Sorry, Athena. I'm going to need to take this phone call. It's been a long time coming. I just hope she's matured a little since I last saw her. Nothing against her, of course. She's been nothing but a great friend. I'm sure she'll have great stories to tell about the kingdom. We certainly have a lot of catching up to do. Hey, that's Phoenix Wright over there. Phoenix Wright? The defense attorney? Uh, thank you for the support, everyone. He's the greatest lawyer this state has ever seen. Hope you're all having a great day. Winner of the Grammarly case from several years back. What is he doing here? Ah, here she comes. I'm actually seeing you right now! You're telling me? I, I can't believe it either. You've grown so much in seven years, Maya. Really? I still feel the same. You must feel weird coming back to the States after being so immersed over there. Yeah. I mean, I kind of missed this. I take spirit channeling very seriously while I'm there. But sometimes, I just want to do nothing. Yeah, I get you. I'd say we should get going now. Oh, come on! What's the rush? It's worth the hustle back, I promise. I have a little celebration plan for the completion of your training in Kurain. I have a lot of new friends for you to meet. Some who are still new to me, even. <laughs> Ooh, there's a burger joint right over there. Can we please grab a bite before we go, Nick? Did you hear what I just said? Don't worry, I heard you, Nick. That's really exciting and super nice. But I want a burger right now. Okay, fine. Hey, uh, Apollo? Oh, hey, you're Mr. Wright's daughter. Yeah, I'm Trucy. I was just wondering if I should introduce myself. Uh, sure. I'm excited that you'll be working with Daddy. I've been nudging him about hiring some friends to take some cases for him. Yeah. I know he really wants me to help with the back end of things, too. Why does your hair stick up in the front? What? Why does your dress defy the laws of physics? It's magic! Uh-huh. No, really! I'm a magician! Can't you tell by my magic panties? You're what? Oh, so you're a magician. Is that why I'm constantly seeing advertisements for Mr. Wright in the weirdest places? Of course! I perform everywhere, Apollo! Everybody loves being surprised by my card tricks and Mr. Hat! Ah, so I see. That's actually really cool. You know, I really have to thank your father more for all these opportunities. Right after my graduation, no less. He really saved me from having choice paralysis. He saved me, too. My reason for caring about law in the first place is thanks to him. He defended me when I was a little girl. That's horrible. I mean that you were on trial as a young girl. I'm sure he knows how thankful you are, though. Wow, I guess your heroes really can live up to the legend. Hey, everyone. Maya's here with me. Congratulations, Maya! Oh my gosh! Thank you! Nick? Who are these people? This is Apollo Justice, a defense attorney I hired two months ago. Just graduated with incredible honors and an all-around good guy. That's so nice for you to say, Mr. Wright. Hi, Maya. Nice to meet you. Hi, Apollo. 
Look who's returned from filing their paperwork. Over here, we have Athena Sykes. She just started working here today. Wh what? Uh, hi, Athena. I love your aesthetic. Hey, thanks. I'm uh, really excited to be here. Sorry if I bring too much energy sometimes. Oh, Nick's gained a high tolerance for energy, I'm sure. Well, I don't know how successful I've been with that. Also, Maya, I would like you to meet my adopted daughter, Trucy. You're joking! You don't have an adopted daughter! That's me! I'm the best magician you'll ever meet! And seriously, he's such a great dad. I can't believe it! Nick! You should have called me! And interrupt your training? I don't think so. Well, it's really nice to meet you all. I think I'll stay for a bit. But soon I'm going out to eat with my friend, Brooke. Uh... Nick? Do you want to come with me? I really should be getting to Athena's paperwork tonight, sorry. That sounds like fun, though. You have yourself a good time. In the meantime, let's all hang out! Yes, I want to hear all about your training. Maybe... with a little bit of magic trick sprinkled in? <laughs> you all go celebrate with Maya. I'll come back in a bit. Ah, <sighs> this feels just like the old days. I never would have thought I could come as far as I have. And it's all thanks to her. I never really got to properly thank her while she was alive, but she really changed my life. I wouldn't have even become a lawyer if it weren't for her. And while her death was unfortunate and a very traumatic event for Maya and I, I never could have gotten here, to this moment, if it hadn't happened. For the first time, I feel like I'm ushering in a new chapter, just like she did for me. I guess it's a passing of the torch in a sense. I see a lot of potential in this new team. Apollo, Athena, and even my daughter. I can't wait to see what they can do. Eureka! To all my colleagues in the prosecutor's office, the citizens of the great county of Los Angeles, and the national eyes that watch this broadcast, it is a great honor to be here to address you tonight, but not nearly as great as the honor of being given the opportunity to serve as your chief prosecutor. I graciously and humbly accept the electoral results, and I thank all the citizens of Los Angeles for the privilege. It may strike you as odd that we are convening in a courtroom today. It is because I would like to demonstrate, no, symbolize, the importance of our court system to the entire country and even the world. Courts are the driving force of any human society. A grand hall of judgment where biases and dishonest intentions must be left at the door. A place where truth is brought to light, the epitome of justice for all. We are the leaders of the nation in terms of our police force and our courts. Several former presidents and even the first female vice president have been from our state. It is the responsibility of Los Angeles to set a great example for our country. And as it stands, we are not doing our due diligence in this task. Our court system requires great reform. Persons with insider positions within our county government have become corrupt. They have violated the sanctity of the principles of justice. It was merely seven or so years ago that an international smuggling ring centered right here in LA was exposed and brought down by Interpol. Since then, what have we done to ensure that our leaders and those in positions of power cannot again reform such an organization? More recently, the underpinnings of the legal system have begun to concern me. Those who would take advantage of their responsibilities to deliver truth and justice have no place in our courts, and as chief prosecutor, I will find them and I will root them out for the good of our city, our county, our state, and our nation. Thank you.
Chief Prosecutor Edgeworth. An interview, if you would. Well, I don't see why not. You mentioned that smuggling ring thingy from way back. Any reason you bring that up in particular? Is it because of those darn leaks from Kudain by that BK character? I noticed you brought up some concerns you've been having lately. Could you clarify? And also, you're still wearing that frilly do hickey? It's been, what, 20 years since we last spoke? This woman. I think it would be better for all if I did not disclose that I know her. I'm sorry, ma'am. You must have mistaken me for someone else. What? No! I... To your questions. The smuggling ring has been fresh in my mind as of late because of the recent developments with one of its former members, Jacques Portsman. He has been released from prison on good behavior and is being allowed to rejoin the police department as an investigator under the new post-prison rehabilitation program. As I've been told, he's become quite the reformed citizen. I believe he declined to rejoin the prosecutor's office because, as he puts it, he's not fit to be putting criminals behind bars. As for your second question, at this time, it would be irresponsible of me to say. However, allow me to assure you this. I am prepared to act at a moment's notice, no matter the circumstance or the cost. That was a great speech, Mr. Edgeworth. Thank you, Detective. It seems to have been well received. We'll see what the paper has to say tomorrow. I bet even the tabloids will lay off you this time. Your optimism is somewhat unfounded. Well, apparently the speech wasn't just broadcast to the country, but also internationally. Everyone's got their eye on you, even the Martians. What? Hold it! Is that? Enough of you, Scruffy. It is I, Francisca von Karma. No way. Ms. Von Karma in the States again after all these years? It appears so. Surprised to see me? Well, though you've accomplished a great deal since we last worked together, I couldn't push this off any longer. I believe what you mean to say is, you're here to claim that I stole the election from you. How dare you, Miles Edgeworth! I... I mean... No, I would never consider such a thing. He won fair and square. Out! Quiet, you! In all seriousness, I think it is rather big of you to come and visit me today. It is largely thanks to your efforts that I find motivation in Interpol to this day. My prosecutorial days may be truly over. <sighs> I miss the days when you were my subordinate. Well... <laughs> You'd be hard-pressed to make the chief prosecutor your investigative underling, so I'll take this in stride, you see. So how's Interpol been treating you these days, Ms. Von Commissar? Quite well. I've been sent all over. My brilliance has been noticed, it seems. My father would not be proud of me. For that, I'm sure. Your father's perspective shouldn't have any bearing on you, Francisca. We've discussed this. You're still carving a new path forward. You are a good big brother. Yes, I know this well. Our fathers were very opposing. Every time I see you, I see more of my own in you, Francisca. Wow, sir. Do not become a philosopher, Mr. Miles Edgeworth. Regardless, I believe the news warranted a visit from yours truly. Hopefully we can stay in touch. I plan on remaining here for a while. Very well. I hope to do the same. Congratulations, Miles Edgeworth. She's really quite the sweetheart when she lets her guard down. Hm. Just don't let her hear you. Hey. Thanks for meeting here. Mr. Enigma, it is an honor to see you after all of these years. Watch yourself. These days, it's Smith. Working in the shadows. It calms me to do so after so many years of being shackled to the office chair. You find yourself doing some dealings in the streets these days? Yes, I suppose you could say that. But not in the ways you may believe. Your firm is getting good business, right? 
The last several years, the firm has been receiving substantial acclaim, yes. However, there is much work to be done outside the walls of justice. Really? Seems uncharacteristic of you, Gavin. Really shady shit. As if you haven't been an enigma yourself. <coughs> you have no grounds to judge my character, or my decisions for that matter. That's why you're completely up your own ass. No, no. It is true, Mr. Enigma. Listen, I don't want to fight here. Let's cool it with the comments and get down to business. Ahem. <clears throat> yes, of course. I apologize for my conduct. Y you know, I feel bad about seven years ago. You remember, don't you? Well, of course I do. What is there to be sorry about? I regret ever agreeing to that deal. I thought that was a guaranteed loss. All the evidence was stacked against me. I even hid the paper. I made it very clear. If it were feasible for you to win the impossible case, you would give her away to me. If you ever so much as looked at her, I would drag the Grammarie name through the mud. You know as well as I do that the family's had a troubling history. That request of yours always confused me. How do you mean? Why my daughter? What connection could you have to her? Well, I... You know, I noticed you and Thalassa were... close. Closer than my lover and her friend ought to be. She was even the one to give you your first legal drink. That was not my first ever drink, you understand. And I always strive to be personable to my clients. Oh? You weren't even a lawyer back then. You! You're so wrapped up in your lies. You're not even close to being prepared to defend yourself. You can't even make a compelling story. You have no proof that our relationship went beyond a simple friendship. She consulted me on some personal matters, perhaps as a close friend, and I did my best to provide emotional support, you see. It is only natural that we had mistakenly come across as more than we truly were. You're so full of shit. You'll have to explain this to me, Gavin. Take that! Don't you see? I've been playing along with your games, Gavin. I know full well that it was an affair. And what is this damned thing, then? So, you want to keep playing stupid, lawyer? This is Thalassa's brooch. It meant everything to her. She kept a picture of me in here at all times. But when she left, I noticed something hidden behind the picture. Would you look and see whose photo is hiding behind my own? And don't even think about calling this Clavier. I wouldn't. So you admit it. Why she had a picture of me obscured in her brooch is no concern of mine. I excuse me? What do you want me to say? Your deductions have... certainly impressed. I want you to admit you had an affair with her. I want you to acknowledge you had more than just a friendly connection to her. It was a shame, really, that she disappeared. It would be even a greater shame if you disappeared again. What are you gonna do? Shoot me? No, but there has been a certain... evidence that has disappeared throughout the years. It would be a shame if it were found. An accident of paperwork, eh? <laughs> Sudden evidence transfer? The unveiling of a magician's shooting mistake? The opportunities are endless. You wouldn't! Oh, but I would! You can't touch me! You have no authority over me! No. Oh. Hmm. What a fool. The brooch left in my hands. Perhaps the two of us have no true influence over one another. But everyone makes mistakes. And one day, he will make one that costs him what little he has left. Thalassa. She is still out there for me. Hey, I've been looking all over for you. Brooke has returned to the States. She's, uh, she's still a problem, right? Indeed, Jacques. She is. Dispatch her.
Thank you.